Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my great honor and pleasure to speak before such a, such a distinguished audience in such a distinguished venue which served as the home of German Parliament for almost uh, 50 years. Here during this presentation I will speak about, also on behalf of my colleagues listed here, about our ongoing work on adapting climate change and addressing land degradation through sustainable land management practices in the example of Central Asia. Here in this presentation, when I say Central Asia, I basically mean five countries, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, and Uzbekistan. The region's climate is sharply continental and intrinsically has high levels of spatial and temporal weather variability. Uh, land degradation is a serious problem, and agriculture is an important uh, source of livelihood, especially for the rural poor. Global and regional models predict that climate change uh, may lead to higher temperatures in the region. However, there is bigger uncertainty about the direction and magnitudes of changes in irrigation, runoff, and precipitation. Some pri previous studies, including the one I cite here, show that uh, Adaptation is, is expected to play a significant role and minimize the negative impacts of climate change in the region. The World Bank estimated some time ago that, climate, that land degradation losses uh, in the region uh, may amount up to two, uh, 2 billion US dollars annually, uh, <coughs> influencing negatively household incomes in the region. But also field level experiment, experiments on carbon release and sequestration show that land degradation in fact also contributes to causing climate change. And climate change pays the favor back by intensifying land degradation. So in this uh, context, the question is, can we hit these two problems with one bullet? Uh, can we adapt to climate change and also address land degradation by using sustainable land management technologies policies and institutions. More specifically, how climate change and land degradation may interact in Central Asia. Is adoption of SLM technologies susceptible to increase rural incomes? Or what are the key drivers for climate change adaptation through adoption of SLM technologies? To answer these questions, uh, we need and mobilize, uh, together uh, with research partners, substantial amount of data Panel data, secondary panel data for the last two decades, including institutional, climate, agroecological variables, downscale climate change, uh, forecasting models for the region. But when we talk about poverty and livelihoods, this is not enough. Uh, what we need also, we need primary, primary household survey data, uh, which we get from conducting national representative agricultural household surveys in the region, with very carefully thought out sampling framework and survey strategy. So what are the key findings so far? The cross-sectional models using household data show that higher weather variability in temperature and precipitation decreases uh, household agricultural net incomes. Higher, level plot level, higher plot level soil erosion also reduces agricultural profits. Their interaction to decrease these negative, negative impacts, that means farmers operating in degraded lands could be hit harder by climate change. When we, uh, not, when we, uh, now we can remember what uh, yesterday several distinguished speakers told us uh, that degraded lands are usually operated mostly by poorer farmers. These same poorer farmers have lower coping and adaptation capacities. This emphasizes again the point that uh, land degradation and climate change ultimately center on the issue on the issues of poverty. So, what happens if households adopt SLM technologies? This graph here shows uh, the marginal change values in household food consumption for different quantiles of households on the horizontal line for every SLM technology adopted. Every SLM adop technology adopted seems to increase household food consumption from 2 to 5 percent. The effect is especially higher for poor households. Why is that? My answer would be since these poor households may be operating more degraded lands, the returns from applying SLM technologies for them is, is higher. They get more benefit out of it. Coming to drivers of SLM adoption, 
Let me first of, first of all say that almost all existing research on climate change adaptation or SLM technology adoption uh, operates in, term, uh, in dichotomous, dichotomous terms, adapted to climate change or did not adapt, adopted SLM or did not adopt. But uh, the reality is much more uh, interesting and exciting. Uh, households may not adopt SLM technology for completely different reasons. And grouping together these households with divergent behavioral patterns could lead to biased results. For example, some may not adopt because the cost of adopting is higher than the benefit they get from adop adopting this technology. Some may not adapt even when it's economically rational because they are constrained in their adop adoption uh, due to lack of access to, for example, credit markets. So in that context, our econometric analysis shows that farmers are adopting SLM technologies in the region as coping actions against climate, against weather shocks. But in most cases, this is happening in response, uh, uh, ex ante to weather shocks, rather than proactively and in a planned way. SLM adoption rates are lower, are lower among poorer households, who are in fact more affected by land degradation, who have lower adaptation capacities to climate change. Higher market access, diversified crop portfolio, Secure land tenure, the question that was raised also yesterday, were found to lead to higher SLM adoption rates. So, but uh, like every study, this is ongoing work and has limitations. What are those limitations? Uh, these results are obtained using farmers' perceptions about soil erosion in their field. And there may be complex behavioral indigeneity issues here. So need to cross-check using externally observed and objectively measured land degradation indicators, for example, uh, very high resolution NDVI uh, data. Or what about to be closer to the ground and think about a day, hopefully sometime soon, when a farmer can buy for as cheap as a mobile phone a handheld optical device and he can measure himself directly land degradation in his, in his uh, plot. So, uh, you also need to account for possible endogeneity between farmers' food consumption expenses and adoption of SLM practices. My key conclusion so far, climate change may intensify land degradation in Central Asia, but most SLM practices recommended in Central Asia can also serve as no regret options under climate change. So why the application of these practices is susceptible to yield multiple benefits in terms of addressing land degradation, adapting to climate change, Evolving crop yield, improving crop yields, and raising agricultural incomes. So, a lot of good work is being already done in the region by the governments. This effort should be continued to strengthen the enabling framework specifically uh, in terms of uh, uh, information dissemination, improving access to markets and credit, and very importantly, securing land tenure and increasing opportunities for crop diversification. I conclude by thanking these excellent institutions for their support in this research. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, very important region where lots of red dots flagged up in earlier mappings uh, of the previous speakers. Any questions to Alicia Mazabaya? Yes, sir. Sorry, uh, speaker. I didn't understand. Did you say that uh, uh, people were uh, against? Uh, those technologies, SLM technologies, uh, like the farmers, I mean, the perception of uh, the technology. Is that what you say? Uh, he will clarify in a moment. Any other point? Yes, sir. <coughs> My name is Mohamed Bakara with the Global Environment Facility. I was wondering if the speaker can um, comment a little bit on the um, uh, international cooperation uh, among the countries with respect to uh, addressing some of these issues that he has raised. It sounded like Central Asia was being presented as one country, but uh, I'd like to get some context on that. Thanks. Okay. Um, Alicia, please take up these two questions. Let me throw it open again and uh, can have cross-cutting questions for five minutes. Yes. Thank you. Answer for the first question, no, I didn't say that farmers have negative perceptions about SLM 
on the contrary, uh, when they need and those SLM technologies they would like to adopt when uh, they would like to adopt when it's making economic sense for them, uh, when it's profitable adopting. And uh, uh, another, uh, so these perceptions, what I said also, need to be cross-checked by actual observed land degradation data. Second question about international cooperation and this uh, region. Here, I, uh, my study was regional for all Central Asia, so that's why I talk about the whole region. But as I said, uh, I, I include five countries. Uh, these countries uh, also uh, have, uh, in, in a lot of respects, very similar land degradation issues, and uh, uh, there have been several and ongoing efforts to cooperate to address these land degradation issues. For example, uh, many people here may be aware of this uh, uh, Central Asian Countries initiative uh, against uh, for land management, Kasselim. So uh, these efforts have been uh, going on, so there is some movement uh, and dynamic for cooperation. Uh, so that's, uh, that's my answer for the second question. Well, I realize there were a number of uh, hands up in the middle of uh, our session. So could I see a sign of hand who would like to make a, a brief point or question or anything? Just to, to set, assess it, one, uh, two, that will be fine. We have uh, three more minutes. Uh, sir, go ahead. Yes, thank you. Um, there's an issue that's come up repeatedly both in this session and also um, in this document itself in table two, which is the issue of drivers of land degradation. And, and there seems to be some confusion. I actually thought the last speaker did a, quite a good job talking about the relationship between climate change um, and land degradation with the first speaker. And also this book refers to several factors such as topography and climate rather than climate change as drivers of land degradation. And topography and climate are both soil forming factors. These are the things that, that allow us to actually form the soil that we're now degrading. And, and I, I would just, I would hope that in the future conversations, um, including in the, the conversation about this document, that we could separate those factors that determine resistance to degradation and resilience, such as slope and climate, from those that may contribute to land degradation, including management. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Very helpful comment. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I'm from the Philippines. Uh, just an additional information. Could you give us, uh, in specific terms, what are those uh, SLM technologies or practices you're mentioning? So that, is it by individual practice or a group of practices integrated in the farming system? Thank you. Yeah. I think that's a, an excellent question to challenge uh, two of our speakers back here. Uh, Ephraim and uh, Alicia, would you address this question? What do you mean by the SLM practices and uh, techniques. Both of you maybe can address it. And then we close this session. Well, in this particular context, I uh, reported when I speak SLM technologies, I mean a very specific number of SLM specific uh, SLM technologies that we asked uh, the farmers uh, during the surveys. They may include such things like uh, uh, elements of conservation agriculture, zero tillage, or mulching, or uh, more uh, resource efficient uh, irrigation methods, and so on. So there were, uh, the household surveys contained uh, several dozens of examples of those SLM technologies that we know to some extent uh, were practiced or were uh, uh, researched in, that, in the region. For example, uh, uh, as I said, this uh, conservation agriculture, zero tillage, uh, uh, drip irrigation, or uh, mulching, use of mulching, this kind of technology. Uh, but uh, also, I, I, uh, in general, when we talk about SLM, uh, uh, here, uh, in our uh, conceptual framework, it's not only about technologies, it's also about institutions and policies. And uh, uh, one te uh, technology alone is not, if, is not enough. Uh, it should be supported, reinforced by appropriate institutional and policy uh, frameworks which also uh, SLM friendly.
Now, um, maybe we, we use, define land degradation. Land degradation is a loss of ecosystem services. Now, ecosystem services embraces a lot of things. The thing that we're talking about, the total economic value, including the spirits, which the government of Uganda was not putting any value to the, the spirits. But the community around the forest, they were putting value to their spirits. So, if you say sustainable land management, Uganda planting sugarcane was going to be sustainable because it was going to be done by a very big farmer who was going to ensure that there is no soil erosion, there was no anything that we have been defining in the past. Land degradation, there was not going to be anything, but there was loss of the forest and the spirits, which to the community, that was land degradation cut that forest. And actually the science is supporting the farmers. So in short, sustainable land management is again context specific. Who is putting value to the ecosystem services? And uh, that's something which is that, in, in short, sustainable land management is the one that does not lead to loss of ecosystem services, which is defined by the people who are using it. Um, we close this one thought. Um, sustainable land management needs to be embedded in strategies for sustainable productivity enhancement comprehensively. Um, and land is part of it. Um, so it needs to be part of a sustainable intensification strategy so that the food security objectives can be met in sustainable ways. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to ask you our four excellent presenters and uh, then it's the coffee break.